bit about the BitCrate future, trying to look into the future. Um, and I think in order for us to uh, discuss what we're going to do in the future, I think it's an important part to talk a little bit about um, how we work and understand where we're at right now. So first of all, BitCrace, like any company, has visions and goals. Uh, we have an external vision that we want to create open platforms that enable people to explore the world of robotics. But of course, we also have an internal vision for the people working at BitCrace. What kind of work environment do we want to have? For us, it's really important being open. We like working with open source, but it also extends further than open source, I would say. We like being transparent, talking to our customers, sharing good and bad things, and telling you what's going on behind the scenes. Another thing we really want is to feel passionate about what we do. A lot of us are really passionate about technology, and we're very passionate about what we do. We also like working with customers we like. It's you, the community. We like having a lot of discussions. Um, we like helping you solve your problems, either with support or with the hardware that we make available. And the last point is creating the workplace we want. So BitCrace isn't necessarily about maximizing profits. It's about having a workplace where we can go every day, learn a lot of things, work with nice technology, work with nice customers, and evolve and do cool products. So the question is, how do we achieve this? Well, the way we work is a big part of this. We are a self-organizing company. So what does this mean? This means a lot of things. One of them is that there is no BitCrace boss. Uh, there are no specific roles. Um, all of the information um, is shared and there's a lot of discussions going on and we decide together what we want to do. Uh, we also work a lot with evolving the way we work. And we work this way because we believe this is the best way to be productive. It's also a really nice way to be productive. But we think this increases our productivity a lot. Um, another part, um, yeah, so um, Working like this means that we are very much the sum of our team members. Since we all decide together, uh, whoever is in the team will affect what we're doing. We get to weigh in everyone, which gives us a really good uh, consensus and decisions and a way to work. Another big part of how we work is our Fun Fridays. If you follow our blog, you've probably seen posts, posts about Fun Fridays. For you that haven't, the Fun Fridays is the day we work on our own projects, whatever projects we want. And this means that you can work on stuff that you don't necessarily, you haven't agreed on with the rest of the team. So you have an idea, you really want to show other people that it's going to work, you want a chance to explore it, this is what you do on Fridays. And it turns out that these Fridays are really innovative. A lot of the ideas we have for products and a lot of products come from these Fun Fridays. I think more than half of the products we have originate from a Friday idea. Um, we also work with goals. So we try to, whatever we decide to do, we try to kind of section down. So we have a three-year goal, but we break down into one-year goal. What do we need to do in one year to get to three years? Three months, three weeks, and so on. Um, so this might be why you sometimes hear us say things like, yeah, we can't do it this quarter. Uh, we'll tr try to see if we can do it next quarter. Or we can't do it this three weeks. We have to do it next week. So how do we decide what to work on them? Well, we have a lot of uh, directions and goals, but we try to avoid deadlines. So what this means is, um, we try to kind of avoid the stress that's caused by deadlines and also the disappointment of not reaching it. Uh, this makes us really agile. Um, and there's a lot of examples of this. Uh, one of the examples might be the flow deck, for instance. Um, one week, we didn't know this sensor existed. Three weeks later, we're working on a prototype uh, because we thought the flow sensor was a really cool idea, which it turned out to be. Another example might be the AI deck. Same thing. We didn't really know about this. We visited, uh, well, we saw it at ETH Zurich. Um, all of a sudden, we're like, yes, we should do this. Um, 
and a month later we're working on a prototype. So it makes us really agile, but it also makes it hard to commit to external dependencies sometimes and to deadlines. Um, yes, and yeah, deadlines anyway is pretty hard because derailing always happens. Um, with production, with company stuff uh, in general. Um, so how does this work out? So what's, what's the results of working like this? Um, I would say they're pretty productive. Uh, we get a lot of stuff done. We've released a lot of products over the years that we're super happy about. Um, we kind of started out 10 years ago with a Crazy Fly 1, the Crazy Radio. We released a Crazy, Crazy Fly 2, new Crazy Radio, some supporting decks. Um, then comes along the flow sensor. Uh, and then we got to do something we always wanted. So ever since the beginning of uh, uh, the Crazy Fly, we've always wanted to position the Crazy Fly. We really wanted to do this to make swarms. We wanted to do autonomy. We really wanted positioning, but we couldn't really have it. Along comes the ultra wideband, and we start working on the what would become the local positioning. And we start down like a long road of different positioning products. Um, we did the, the local positioning. We did the passive marker deck, the active marker deck, the lighthouse, another project that originates from a Friday. Um, we also did things like the multi-ranger where you can look at the walls. And we added a lot of functionality this way. And um, if you bought a Crazy Fly in 2014, I would say that the, there has been a lot of progress since then. Back then, we were flying one Crazy Fly in our client with a joystick. Then we started flying more Crazy Flies when we could do positioning. Then we started to do autonomy. Now we're moving from the computer to the app layer to do autonomy. There's a lot of exciting things that ha that's happened aside from the hardware part. So aside from this, every day we also do a lot of other stuff. Um, it is a normal company. We have to do a lot of stuff. We need to do sales. We need to do packing. We need to do support. We need to fix bugs and whatnot. Um, and during a lot of these products, more probably more than half, we've only been four or five people. So we've been hugely productive over the last 10 years, I would say. And now we're seven people. Um, we're back to the office again after Corona. And we're super excited to get back to work and it's full speed ahead again. So the question will be full speed ahead on what? So what we're currently working on is improving the stability and usability. We have the test lab. Um, we're working a lot with GitHub, uh, fixing issues. We've done a lot of documentation and so on. Um, we're also looking at getting products out of early access. So one of the products is the AI deck that we heard a lot about yesterday. We're working on a bootloader for this, so you won't have to use JTAG. We're also working on documentation, tutorials for it, making it easier for you to use it. We're also looking at the Vault and the Big Quad deck. You probably saw and Tobias talked about this before. Um, and there's a few things left to do for tuning examples, for example, and stuff. So we're trying to, to get this out of early access as well. Something you might not have heard about before um, is the Crazy Radio 2. So this kind of, this is work that we think will increase the, the usability and the stability of a product. The radio communication is really fundamental. And we think that with a new crazy radio, you will be able to have a better user experience, but you'll also be able to develop more. So the current plan is to use on NRF52 on this, which will give you a much better development environment to work on whatever you want to put on the radio, uh, whatever that might be. So we're really, uh, we're really, uh, uh, positive and looking forward to this. So this is the stuff that we're going to do this quarter, looping back to the plan. So what about next year and the coming years, maybe? Well, 
So, like I said, we have a lot of different goals and a lot of paths to take, um, but we've decided on a few of them that we're really interested in fixing, really passionate about getting this released. And we think it's something that will, uh, something that the community and our users want. So first up is an upgraded platform. So initially when we released the Crazy Fly 2, um, I think we were only using 20 to 30% of resources. We wanted the additional 70-80% uh, to be used by you, the users. So you could do your experiments, you can your, your, uh, add your code and do what you wanted. Um, as all these decks and all these features that I talked about before has been added, some of like the resources that are free have uh, uh, become less and less. We started using the CCM for, uh, uh, for the memory, but still things are getting really tight. And we want you, the users, to be able to continue to try out your stuff, do new fun things, do new experiments. So this needs to be solved. Right now we're looking at an upgrade um, of a microcontroller. The stm 32 a 7 is the one we're looking at. We still haven't decided exactly which one. Like I said, this is something that we're gonna be working on after next year. Not after the next year, but after New Year's. Uh, the update includes both the Crazify 2.1 and the Crazify. We want to lift them both up so you can continue using them for your research, education, or whatever you might want to do with them. The next thing we want to do is to improve functionality. So we think today that we, we have a pretty good portfolio. We have a lot of decks. Um, we have CrazyFly, the Bolt. Um, we have a nice feature set, but we feel that they could all be improved a bit. Um, to make it easier to use, to increase the usability, stability, and also completing some of the functionality. So part of the usability might be, like I talked about with Crazy Fly 2.0. This will enable us to, to do new things and make it easier to use our system. Stability we talked about, completely in functionality. Um, an example of this uh, might be uh, something we talked about earlier during the BAM days. Uh, supporting more than two base stations for the lighthouse. It works really well, but it could be even better. And the list for competing, completing functionality is long. There's a lot of stuff we could do here. So this is definitely something that we're passionate about working more with in the future to make things even better, easier to use and more stable. We're also interested in widening our ecosystem. So we hear a lot of feedback that people want to fly with more payload, longer flight time, and also with other types of robots. Who doesn't want more robots? So you've probably seen our blog, um, some of the prototypes, there's one picture here. We have one here. We see that one, yes. Um, so this is a brushless quad based on the Bolt. And this is something we're really passionate about getting out. Um, currently, we've done a lot of experiments. You can read about on the blog with different batteries. But we're really interested in nailing down what exactly we want to do and to be able to make it available to the community. Something you haven't read about um, is a brushless crazy fly. And let's see here, I have one here that I can show. So this is the current crazy fly this size and this is a brushless version of it so it has the same size um, same expansion port but it has brushless motors instead so this is a prototype we have that we've been trying out that we really like it's very fun to fly it has uh, more oomph and um, it can carry a little bit more and this is something we're interesting in in exploring more and something that we would really love to make available to the community. Uh, it's not gonna replace the old Crazy Fly. This is not in the plan, um, but you're probably gonna read more about it later on. Uh, we're also interested in ground robots. Um, 
this is something that we've been working on on and off, but now we feel that it's really interesting to look at um, heterogeneous forms and bring the capabilities of a crazy fly to something that could be on the floor, for instance. So you could all fly like a crazy fly, a, a bolt version that's bigger and something that would be on the ground. What exactly this will be, uh, it's not defined yet, but it's something that we're really thinking about. So what else? Well, we really like working with the community. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of interesting discussions. Um, but we feel that sometimes we, uh, we're not really sure where research is heading and we're not really sure what kind of problems you want us uh, to, to help solve. Um, and I think um, this would help us knowing. Um, it's, I think it's also not always clear where we are heading. Uh, it's harder to maybe contribute your changes if you don't know our direction and you don't know what we're interested in. And during the BAM days, we've had a lot of discussions about this here at the office offline. Um, we've discussed it also online with you. Um, but I think one of the things we would like to do is to work more in the open somehow. Uh, what we've been trying now is to have uh, uh, work with GitHub, issues, pull requests, having discussions there. We really like what we've done during the BAM days, getting a chance to meet you and to have a lot of interesting discussions. Um, one of the things we actually discuss, uh, have been discussing yesterday and today a lot is the possibility of maybe meeting people once per month or once per quarter, um, just informally, having a few hours or an hour just to discuss what are you doing, what are we doing, what can we help you with, um, and where are we heading? Um, we also, uh, I've, one of the things we've also discussed is talking more about our direction. What are we interested in doing and where are we heading and how might your research fit into this? And the last one is showing more prototypes. So like I said, um, fun Fridays, very innovative day, a lot of new stuff coming out, um, but some of it we, we never show. Um, and it's hard to frame with because this is one person doing one thing and it's not something that Bitcrys might be interested in releasing. But it would be really interesting to have some feedback really early in the process to hear what you think, to see if it's something that is interesting for you or if we can change it in some way or if it's not interesting for you. And that might change our direction a little bit and might make it something that we make available. Yes, and the last thing is more decks. One of our favorite features of the Crazy Fly is the expansion port. Um, it's really hard to make a small quadcopter that carries a lot of stuff uh, that's able to do everything to a reasonable flight time at a reasonable price. And we think that the expansion port has been a really, really nice feature of a Crazy Fly. As things have progressed, as new positioning system has become available, new sensors have become available, we can release new decks um, and you can add them to your existing crazy flies. You can test new things out um, and the functionality of a product becomes better. So this is definitely something that's gonna happen. Um, we have uh, prototypes and there's new sensors that's gonna come out. Um, Yes, and actually, like just last week, we there was two new Dex prototypes from a From Friday mounted uh, that we're testing and playing around with. So I think that's it. Um, I wanted to to add with or end with one slide uh, that says like we will continue to explore new technology and try to integrate it into the Crazy Fly ecosystem. Uh, for anyone that knows us. I think you have understood by now that we are very passionate about technology and we like trying out new things. And we're very passionate about bringing this new technology that we try to you, the users, in some way uh, to make, to solve your problems and to make the platform better for you. So this is what we're gonna aim for. I think that's, uh, that's it for me. Uh, now I hope that you have a little bit better view of where we're
You just have to unmute yourself, uh, Marcus. Sorry. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So now I think it's over to Barbara uh, for the last presentation of Bamblis. The closing. Yes. Yes. Thank you uh, very much, uh, Marcus. Let me just share quickly my screen if I can. Do you see my screen? Can can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you and we can see you. Your screen Great, is thanks. visible. Go for it. Thank you very much. Yes, so the BAM days are uh, soon ending. It's the last presentation. It's not the last of the BAM days because right after that, we have a party in a Mibo room. Uh, but I just wanted to, uh, yes, uh, talk a, a little bit about what we experienced uh, in the last uh, three days. So it was uh, three days. Uh, we had 141 attendees, with which uh, in total uh, 1,608 hours of content. So that's a lot to give you a quick idea that um, that's the equivalent of uh, 67 days. Uh, <laughs> so that's a lot. And we're really happy that you were so uh, so many with us uh, um, sharing interest talks and, and interesting talks. Uh, all the content has been recorded, as you will have noticed, and they will be. Uh, so right now we have uh, 15 videos uh, on a YouTube channel. Uh, sometime next week, uh, they will be available for you to see. If you missed something, you will be able to see them there. Um, and now I just wanted to, uh, yeah, to um, see a little bit bit what happened these three days with uh, some highlights. Uh, so the first day was uh, all about a uh, navigation system. And we uh, began with uh, Klaus Cuthbert uh, from uh, Augsburg uh, that uh, had a really inter interesting talk. And uh, it was nice enough to uh, wish a uh, happy birthday to the whole big race, which we really appreciated. Um, and then they were actually uh, a talk by Joseph Ladelfa. So I want to share with you, he explained a little about uh, how he's been trying to uh, train a drone uh, following your movement. And uh, that's what the office looked like while we try to reproduce the movements uh, of yeah, tra training your drone basically at uh, the same time as, the, uh, as uh, Joseph uh, explained. You can see all of us really uh, focused and concentrating on our movements. That was really fun and interesting. And we are uh, on the first day, we had also uh, Qualysis. And I made a nice demo where you can see a crazy fly following a small uh, uh, car there. I don't know if, uh, if it's big enough for you to see the, the crazy fly. Yeah. So that's uh, using a motion uh, capture system on the on the car in the crazy fly. Uh, yes, that's it for the first day. Uh, the second day, uh, so we had a nice, uh, it was all about AI deck. Uh, we had a talk from uh, Francesco Pacci uh, of uh, Greenwave uh, Technologies <clears throat> and uh, uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel Palossi. Uh, from uh, the pulp uh, platform uh, that talked about uh, autonomy. Uh, Arno did some workshops too about uh, Rust and about uh, the app layer and the lib. Um, so he looks really proud of himself there because it was a really nice workshop. Uh, the second day was also dedicated to a little uh, bit of, uh, we had uh, community Q&A. Uh, we had some uh, really nice talks uh, in the Mibo rooms that's uh, us, uh, literally at a round table uh, so we're really happy with uh, all the feedback we we had um during uh, those uh, the, the the this day particularly but even the, the the three days just talking to you and everyone was really uh really nice and appreciated uh, we got to learn a lot of things and the third the third day so that was today it was all about swarms uh, we had uh, wolfgang uh, talking about swarms and the crazy swarm he had a panel with uh, jonas and uh, uh, we don't know who won basically uh, if it's uh, the crazy swarm or the 
euh, si elle flippe. Euh, euh, we had a nice demo by uh, Tobias that showed, uh, shown us uh, the bolts flying. And uh, uh, Guido, the Kroon, and uh, Bartis had of talked about swarm of uh, autonomous drones. It was quite a heavy demo day because we had uh, Jonas. Uh, swarm you can see flying here said the setup was like that and it was a really nice uh, uh, demo with uh, nine uh, seven crazy flies flying in it and we also we had also a Christopher demo uh, with the uh, yes This one uh, distributed consensus uh, fully autonomous uh, crazy fly demo. So uh, that was a really, really full back day. <laughs> uh, I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Uh, I wanted as the last words before parting. Uh, oh, yeah. Didn't we forget about something? We had a quiz, actually, on the first day. There was two sessions on the first uh, day uh, in the afternoon and on the second day in the morning. Uh, and the winner would be able to win a golden crazy fly as pictured here. Uh, so it's time now to announce the winner. And it's actually, if you can, I will show you the leaderboard. It's actually Matilda Chen, uh, that one with an impressive uh, 12,000 uh, points. Uh, so we will contact uh, you, Matilda, if you're here and listening. I don't know, but we will con we will contact her to uh, to uh, give you uh, your uh, golden crazy fly. Congratulations! Um, yes, uh, and now I just wanted to. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, uh, for being here, for having interesting talks. I want to thank the keynote speakers that take off their busy schedule to uh, uh, to give their um, awesome talks. Uh, I want to thank the people at the welcome platform. Uh, Anouk, I don't know if you're here, but uh, you've been a great help and uh, everything uh, was went as smooth as possible. Uh, Uh, and uh, we hope we'll see you again next, but uh, next is the party. So we have a Mebo room dedicated to it. Uh, I suggest we will all uh, get there quite uh, soon if you want to, um, to put on your uh, disco shoes. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone.